Alan Paul with High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at the Intel DX79SI Extreme Series motherboard. This is built for the new Sandy Bridge E Series Core i7 Extreme processors, which are Socket 2011. It is designed for extreme users. It does have eight quad channel DIMM slots. It is Bluetooth and Wi Fi compatible. There is a module that's included with the motherboard. Um, this happens to be a sample motherboard for testing only, so of course they did include some of the some of the uh, accessories with it and one of them was not the uh, was the uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. It does include power supervisor and again it's for the LGA 2011 processors. If we turn the box around we can see that there's a picture of the board on it. This does come with a mouse pad and it has a three-year warranty. It is also SLI and Crossfire capable. If we open up the flap on the board, you can see a clear plastic panel. That clear plastic panel shows part of the motherboard. And in all honesty, I haven't seen an Intel motherboard that looks like this in a very long time. It looks pretty appealing to the eye. When we flip it down, our top panel, of course, says Design for Extreme, Extreme, Extreme Series, Extreme Processors. Gives you some of the, uh, some of the features of the board on it. And also on the front label here, we see that we have Power Supervisor, Intel Overclocking Assist, Fast Boot, and BIOS Vault Technology. So let's go ahead and open the board and take a look at what's inside. The board comes in a clamshell box and as I said there are some accessories that were included. I do have a tri-SLI bridge and a and a single SLI bridge or a dual SLI bridge. Here's the nice mouse pad that comes with it. Of course you're going to, going to get the I.O. plate for the back. And a thermal probe which gets connected to the motherboard. When we open up the clamshell covering and take out the board, we'll take a quick look at this. This board actually impressed me. I've been reviewing Intel motherboards for quite a long time and one thing that I've noticed is a lot of times the heat sinks look like those little anodized aluminum wafers. They don't look like they're going to do very well and they don't seem to be as hardy as these look right now. I mean this is a this is a heat pipe coming from from your uh, chipset back and forth so you're going to get better cooling out of that. You're also going to get better cooling out of the top. These are voltage regulated heat sinks. They, as the voltage increases of course the cooling capacity gets better. We're going to go and look at the socket here. The socket you can see is a lot larger than you're used to and it also has two clips on it to open it. You will notice that it will tell you which one to open first and which one to open second. It is very important. Now, normally there is a plastic piece covering the chipset. Since this had the actual processor in it when I received it, I don't have the plastic cover for it. But I don't want to show you the processor because I want you to look at the processor in our processor review and we do have a video on that. So technically Intel states that you need to open this side first which would be the left side if you're facing the board and then 
open the right side, releasing the socket, and then bringing the socket down. Now, of course, the plastic piece you would leave on. You would then place in your processor, go ahead and reverse the process. Then you would put the right side down, and then the left. So that's the new way to actually install the CPU. Make sure you always keep your hands off the brushes of the motherboard and off the back of the processor. We could also see that this has eight DIMM slots. These eight DIMM slots can hold up to 64 gigabytes of, of memory and rated up to 2400 megahertz on an OC. Going across the board, we can see that there are a 24-pin 20, connector. We have a fan header down here. We have two SATA 6 S SATA ports and two SATA, SATA, SATA 3 gig. I mean four SATA 3 gig SATA, uh, SATA ports. We have a beautiful heat sink here with the skull on top of it. One, two, three, four connectors for USB front panel. This is your BIOS configuration tab. Uh, it's actually a uh, tab to put between the two different places in the BIOS so you can change your BIOS. USB 3.0 header. Of course, front panel connectors. This is IEEE connector here. We have a power button and a reset button as well as a debug. Coming across further, this is where you would plug in your, your case's audio. You have two PCIe X1 connectors, one PCI connector, and one, two, three PCIe 3.0 connectors. These will be compatible with uh, PCIe 3.0. With a, BIOS, with a BIOS update when PCI 3.0 does come more readily available. If we go across the board this way, we'll see another fan header, and then we'll look at our, our IOs. This, of course, is for sound, 10 channels, including, including an output. Now, it's 8 channel on, on the IO, and then 2 channels for the front, meaning 10 channel, and, of course, the optical. It is dual gigabit Intel LAN. We do have multiple USB connections on the I.O. port. Also have USB 3.0. This right here is a back to BIOS button. Once it's depressed, it'll give you, get you back to BIOS, especially uh, if you're over uh, performance tuning your system. Here is another fan header. And as we turn it this way, we'll see our 8-pin power connector also. The back of the board has all your diodes and, of course, the, a back plate for the uh, socket itself. This board is very well designed. It's a nice-looking board, something that uh, I'm not used to seeing lately from Intel. Usually seems like there's a lot of things missing on their boards, but this time they've done a great job. It's very eye appealing. And after testing this board, it is a very stable board and it complements the use of the processor itself and the quad channel memory. Well, this has been our quick overview of the Intel DX79SI motherboard. For the full review, please visit www.hightechlegion.com. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Stay thirsty, my friends. Bye-bye.